So here we are again with the SWTPC6800. So last time I was able to get um, CPU board and this is the control card, which is a 300 baud serial uh, port that now that connects out to my, my computer. So fixed the power supply and got these boards um, both working. So uh, now we're kind of um, thinking about what to get to work next. So all of these cards were actually in the system when I got it. And these are the ones that really I need to do next. These are the uh, memory boards. Uh, in the last video, I think I said they were 8K each. So actually they're 4K each. Um, so with all of these, it would have um, 16K uh, of RAM. Uh, these are the cord cards at the bottom, again, maybe try and get each of these working in a, in a separate uh, subsequent video. This is a, a serial, uh, so MPS is a serial and actually goes faster than the 300 baud. This would do, um, what's that, 1200 baud. Um, these are um, parallel ports, so um, you can see there's two, two kind of eight pin connectors there. So I don't know, I don't know much about the parallel ports. I've done a fair bit of uh, looking at the serial port. And then this is um, an interrupt controller, MPT. Now, interesting thing about all of these boards is they're all original SWT PC uh, boards. The the um, uh, you can get the sem uh, schematics and the assembly instructions for these, and I think they they these all came as a kit, as as did the computer. Um, and they give you things like theory of operation and how to check out uh, the board once you've, you've done building it. And one of the things in the checkout procedure is to run the uh, memory diagnostic programs that they provide you. Um, um, so we're going to be doing that. We're going to run Robit, uh, not Memcom, but Robit. Robit does a whole bunch uh, more than Memcom. I think it's a better test. Uh, so um, uh, bill of materials as well. So the th thing to note is that most of this board is built around... Um, it says uh, IC1 to 16 are these 2102 static random access chips, right? So let me see if I can get you a close up on one of them. So each one of these chips that you're seeing there is one of these 2102s. There you go. Um, and um, they provide the schematic for the board. So essentially, um, these 2102s are one kilobit static RAMs. Um, so and that, this is uh, this is you know each one of these chips there is one of these twenty one oh twos. So the board itself is really simple. It's actually a very a very simple design. You basically have address and data uh, bus line drivers, and then you just have the chips connected uh, to the bus. There's a bit of address decoding stuff going on over here, but each one of these chips is um, running a single bit. So you have ten address lines and then data in out on a single bit. So to get to a byte of RAM you need eight of these chips, which is what's going on here. Um, so um, eight chips makes uh, one kilobyte. So in this diagram, you see there's uh, the, uh, that's one uh, K, that's another K, so you got two K. And interesting is they don't even show you the 4K configuration in the schematic. They just say, you know, keep going. There's the, you know, this pattern repeats. So it, it's kind of, it's a fairly simple design, pretty easy to understand. The other kind of nice thing is they provide you with this table which says, okay, so if you have a memory board and they're saying, oh, look, you can have up to eight memory boards in the machine. I mean, can you imagine how, how much power that would consume? Um, a lot. Um, but they tell you, okay, where, is, where does the address of each quadrant or each bank, which is one of these lines, where does it start and end? And then also, if you have a bit that's not working on a particular line, which chip is at fault? So in quadrant three, um, if bit four is stuck, let's say, then it means IC chip 34 is the one that's likely at fault. And they give you this kind of nice diagram which has all the chips labeled so you can figure out which chip is at fault. Just before I put these cards in, in the machine, one thing I wanted to show you. Um, so I have this um, this Belkin um, power cost meter, right? So, um, and the SWT PC is, is plugged into this at the wall. Um, so when I turn it on, um, what you should see is, there you go, there it's consuming about 26 watts. Now, in the last video, I said, you know, one of these, um, one of these transformers must have burnt out. 
um, um, and that's why they put this other part. Uh, that's why they put this um, top transformer in. I actually don't think that was the reason anymore. And um, so let me show you what happens to um, the uh, power consumption when I put all of these boards in. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, they put another transformer in here. Anyway, let's uh, let's get on and put these uh, memory boards in. Okay, so um, all four uh, memory boards are in now. So that's your 16K in the machine. Um, so uh, let's just uh, switch it on. So you can see there it's at 78 watts, right? So it was like 25 before. So um, basically we're consuming an extra 52 watts with this 16K of RAM. And each of these memory boards has two five volt 7805 regulators with heat sinks on them. You, you can see them down there. And when you turn it on, you can actually, you know, after a while, you'll begin to feel the heat coming off them. So one of the reasons I think they put this additional transformer in is this has a higher rating. So it's uh, on the 7.5 volt rail, it has uh, 15 amps uh, rather than 10, right? So this transformer at the bottom can only just, I think, drive this, the, uh, these memory boards in the machine. So I think they put uh, an extra transformer in to just buy them a bit of headroom. So as I said, these get hot. So um, what I have is a kind of fan arrangement. So here's just a couple of normal computer fans um, connected to a, um, this is a controller board that can detect temperature and stuff. I'm not, I'm not really setting this up permanently like this, but just while I'm working on it, um, also powering from a 12 volt power pack. Um, so this just buys me, um, I just feel better about cooling, uh, those heat sinks, um, considering I've got like 50 Watts being uh, consumed by these memory boards. So, uh, anyway, let's get on and test these memory boards. So this is the, uh, robot, uh, memory test program. And this is the program that I want to, um, used to test the memory. Now, I started to look at this piece of paper and kind of wonder, what do I do with it? How do I actually get this into the computer? I was like two years old when these these um, uh, computers were um, actually being produced. So I've never used anything like this. Um, but after thinking about it for a while, I've, I figured it out. So basically this is the assembly language, right? So they're giving you that, you know, just to say, this is what the program is doing, but that's just for informational purposes. If you had an assembly language program, which is basically everything everything from this column that way, and you compiled it, you'd end up with a binary. You'd end up with an executable program. And the executable program is actually this column of numbers, right? Um, so in order to type it in, I'm basically typing in this column of numbers, and this tells me the address where the numbers are supposed to go. So to type in this program, I hit M, uh, and then the address A014, uh, that's to modify addre memory address A014, and then I start typing this column. So I'm gonna get on and do that. Um, and I'm sure it's gonna be fascinating for you to watch me type in all these numbers. Um, so I'm gonna speed it up. So switching on, and this is where um, I'm gonna start to kind of type in the program. So I get the, the MCBUG prompt, and I'm starting to modify the right memory location. So this is kind of speeded up a lot. Um, it's quite hard to get right, but you can go back and modify locations later. Now, this is the point where I start to run the memory test um, and it finds all kinds of errors, all starting at address 3000. So that's the, there's four cards. This is the fourth card. It finds every address faulty in the fourth card, just about. Um, so now I focus in a little bit and I just want to test the first three cards, make sure they're good. So I set the address range for just the first three cards. That's up to address 2FFF. Um, so I set that and I hit say go, runs the program. And you'll see it outputs the little plus signs. Each plus sign says that the test completed on, on the card and it found no errors. So this is a good sign. First three cards are good. Okay, so this is, um, this is the fourth, um, number four memory board and this is the one with the problems um i seem to have been able to get the other ones to work by just kind of cleaning them up and seating things properly um 
this one shows us kind of every um, every bank says it has a problem, right? Which suggests that everything is 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 wrong with this card. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna take out the memory chips and I'm gonna test them one by one. Um, these uh, uh, so this is uh, address the address lines. This is the data lines, and then there's some decoding logic here. Now um, I think I've I've got an Arduino program that I've made to test these. I'll show you that in a second. And I can actually test these with my EEPROM programmer. It has a um, has a test programmer. It can it can test seventy four series logic. So I think I can do these as well. So the only one I can't really test are these um, data line drivers. So what I'm going to do, and it's going to take a while, um, I'm going to spray deoxit on the board. Good old deoxit, and I'm I'm going to take all the chips out, and because um, I can very carefully, and I'm going to test all the ones that I can test and just see if I can figure out what's what's going on here, because this is, this one, it's kind of, it's it's weird, like it partially works, um, but it, it just shows signs of being, um, um, I got it to pass one test on one bank, it's like one of these banks worked, which means that everything, every part of the address decoding had to work for that test to, to pass once. Um, which suggests you know it's a loose connection. It's one of these kind of intermittent things. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try taking everything out, cleaning it up. I'm gonna test these logic chips and the memory chips in a tester I've got and see where we get to. Okay, so the trusty deoxid goes on, um, and then I start removing uh, the, the all of the chips from the board. The great thing about the the boards in this machine is every single chip was socketed, which was just makes it so much easier to kind of troubleshoot this sort of thing. Um, so you see they, me there kind of laying them out, um, again, 32 memory chips, um, and then the, those chips on the, the right-hand side are all the other ones. So this is the, the 2102 memory tester. This is the website that I found, uh, the program that does the memory test and the wiring diagram. So it's pretty easy to set up. You just need an Arduino Mega. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to put one of these 2102 chips and in, uh, into this. Um, he actually, the website also shows you how to test other kinds of memory chips as well. So uh, you hit the reset button, and I'm going to show you what the what it outputs. It basically tests each uh, address bit individually, uh, and then it writes all ones, writes all zeros, and then it writes a random pattern and waits 10 seconds. That's what it's doing right now, waiting 10 seconds. And then it checks to see that the random pattern uh, comes back uh, correct. So it does, this chip actually uh, passes okay. So we try it with another chip, which isn't okay, and you get just, you know, pages of kind of error information. Uh, it's doing its right and then wait 10 seconds. So after this, it's going to check to see if it's random right worked. Uh, um, and in this case, no. Uh, so that chip's in a pretty bad state. Um, so I do this test with all 32 of the memory chips on the board. It takes quite a while. So here I've sp sped it up for you. Now what's surprising is how many chips are bad versus good on this board. Uh, a lot of them were bad and it's, it, it's kind of can bit concerning, right? Uh, this is the um, this is my EEPROM programmer, and what I discovered uh, in trying to repair this board is that my EEPROM programmer can actually test 74 series logic. So what you do is you put the 74 series chip in, you can select from the menu, uh, it has a whole bunch of, I think, I think almost all 74 series logic, uh, you select the chip number and then hit test, and it will validate that um, uh, the chip is working. So I did, I tested everything I could, um, and um, uh, so I now have good. Everything I know is a, is a good chip, and I managed to find on eBay um, a seller who's selling um, the 2102 uh, logic chip. So I ordered uh, a bunch from him, um, waited them for for them to arrive, um, and here I am, kind of reassembling the board, putting it all back together. And this is me typing in again the the, the test program. Okay, so um, I'm running for a bit now. And you see, after that initial problem, everything seems to have settled down, and it's running this, um, it's running the memory test program, the Robit One memory test program, no problem. Um, so that appears then that we've got four working 4K memory boards. Cool. Thanks for watching. Um, uh, please comment on this video if you want, um, and I'll see you in the next one.